quite often uh, when people uh, are used to uh, being involved in something, uh, when changes take place, some people don't like changes, and, and that's sort of the conservative approach. And we see this in, in all kinds of cultures. We see this in the arts. We see this in the, the food cultures, you know. Um, there, there's complaints that, you know, we don't have any more traditional Japanese restaurants in Vancouver. Well, maybe that's true, but this is how it's evol evolving. And I think the Japanese Canadian community, and I call it, I think we should call it the Nikkei community rather than just say the Japanese Canadian community. I'm speaking now in English, so, so I, I use the word Japanese Canadian, but really it's the, the Nikkei community. And it's evolving, and it's evolving the way it has to evolve and the way it should evolve. I've always been in search of identity. Who are we? Why are we here? Or, or you know, uh, this kind of search of identity. And we've always had that because we were always a minority. And um, we were uh, segregated, uh, discriminated against before the war in many ways, socially and, and uh, occupationally. There's lots of. And then the war, of course, um, the evacuation, the forced removal, that you're no longer Canadians, you are the enemy, and, and so forth. And then the, after the war, you know, it's okay, you're, 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 you can stay here after all, kind of thing. Um, I remember in 1953 when I had just come back from Japan and I was in a JCCA and I was, I guess, active or I joined the activities of the JCCA from the, that day, from that time. But there was lots of suggestions by the Niseis we don't need the JCCA anymore. If we have the JCCA, Canadians, and they use the word Canadians, Canadians are think will always look upon us as, us as Japanese. So let's, we don't need the JCCA. We're, we're Canadians, so we shouldn't, we shouldn't need a Japanese organization. That's how strong um, the evacuation forced the Niseis to think. And the extreme of, of that thinking was that, okay, the war's over, we're now accepted back in our society, we are now Canadians, uh, we're not going to eat with chopsticks, we're gonna, not going to uh, have shoyu, we're gonna, not going to eat uh, broiled fish, and even if we do, if the Hakujin friends come, we're going to put it away and then bring out our knives and forks. We're going to prove to them that we're... That was so wrong, but it was a, uh, it was a, it was a reaction. Well, the Sanseis, growing up under that, are again saying, well, they're not the Niseis, they're not the Niseis, they're quite different. They don't have a language thing. The, you know, a lot of the Niseis, my age or older, in the 1960s or even 70s, were very hesitant to go to Japan. They wanted to go, and they maybe had relatives, or they maybe, you know, but they wanted to go to the land of their, their ancestry, but they were hesitant, reluctant, because they didn't speak proper Japanese, like the Japanese, and the Japanese will look upon them, you know, why they don't speak Japanese when they look like a Japanese. There was no understanding, you know, of the Nisei background. And, and a lot of Niseis didn't want to experience that, so they didn't go to Japan. A lot of Niseis that moved east did not deliberately come back to Vancouver. They didn't want to have, go through that experience of what they went through before. So we had that kind of a situation. So, Again, whether it be East Says, Nise Says, Sun Says, because of what they had to go through, they were always in search of identity. Whether they realized it or not, you know, they wanted to find their place. Um, they needed to have that. So then in the 60s and 70s came the new immigrants. 
not big in number, but certainly, you know, um, a factor. And uh, just to give you one example of, of this, uh, uh, one of the new immigrants, in fact, Mr. Kato was the, one of the original uh, New Immigrants, Associ uh, Immigrants Association president, Mr. Kato, he passed away, but he said, I immigrated from Japan to Canada. I like Canada. I, I, I'm going to live here. But I'm not a Canadian citizen yet. So can I join the JCCA? Because the JCCA is Japanese Canadian Citizens Association. Well, I'm not a Japanese Canadian. I'm not a citizen, but can I join the JCCA? And I said, Mr. Kato, anybody can join the JCCA. But you have to realize, you know, you have to understand why uh, Mr. Kato would, would uh, have that kind of thinking. So here again, and uh, there are in the, when the early immigrants came in early, in the 1960s, late 1960s, the first immigrants came, I think a lot of Niseis were expecting um, a lot from the new immigrants. It's like we were here before, you know, our parents came here, we're the Niseis, we know Canada. So when you come to Canada, you start to speak English. You know, we want to hear you speaking English. <laughs> and of course, you can't expect that from a just newly arrived person from Japan or not only Japan, you know. Um, they were forgetting what the Issei's went through too, you know. But that was because the Niseis were trying to be so-called good Canadians, uh, you know, that uh, you had to speak English and, um, and we don't need the JCC anymore. We're, we're, we're Canadians. We don't have to say we're Japanese Canadians. We're just Canadians. That's what they wanted to say. Then the new immigrants came. We're not Canadians yet, or I don't know whether then they will be. It doesn't matter. And then if you look into the 80s and 90s, there was another new wave of immigrants from, from the more current Japan, a little different from the early immigrants. And the children of the new immigrants were now growing up. And the children of the Sanseis, the Sanseis, even today, I have not done personally done a research, but from every part that I hear, um, every source that I hear, the majority of the Sanseis, as high as 70, 80 percent, are not marrying a person of Japanese blood. Caucasian Canadians, you know, we call them Hakujin, but or are they marrying a, a, another European or um, uh, another Asian person? And their children are what? Well, they're Canadians, yes. But, you know, people want to brand people into saying, okay, you're Japanese, you're Chinese, and um, that's how what we're accustomed to. So the conservative people want to, to, to put people in a, in, a, in a place. Well, today, you know, from the 90s and into the year 2000, I think the people of Japanese descent or the people with, who have some Japanese blood in them combine in the lower mainland might be, what, 70,000? I don't have no idea. And maybe it's 60,000, maybe it's 100,000. But we no longer, my daughter is married a Caucasian Canadian. My grandchildren who are in their 20s, they don't have to, they're not put in a position where they have to think, what am I? Am I Canadian or am I Japanese or am I, what? They don't have to think. They, do, they don't think and they don't have to think. That's fine. But let's not brand them. Let's not say, well, you're half Japanese and half Canadian, therefore, you know, 
We should not do that. Recently, I, I, uh, two, three years ago, I, I wrote an article and I think I gave a speech to that, um, who is a Nikkei? Because, because we tend to, and because the Japanese in Japan tend to brand people, put them in a spot. So for the people in Japan, a Kanada Jing, a Canadian, has to be a Caucasian Canadian. Cannot be an Asian Canadian. They're not Canadians. That's the image that the Japanese have, and, and even today they have that. So we have tens of hundreds of uh, students coming from Japan, and they have the English course in Canada, and a one-week homestay at a Canadian family. If you put them in a Chinese-Canadian family, if you put them in a Vietnamese-Canadian family, they're going to complain. We did not stay at a Canadian home. And, and because the image is, the conception is that a Canadian is English-Canadian. But how Canada has changed, you know, it's a multicultural country. How British Columbia has changed, how Vancouver has changed, where there's more than 50% are not Caucasian. Well, in my speech or my presentation, I said, what is Nikkei? I said, we have gone beyond where we can put people in slots. We, I don't know what my, my grandchildren are. If you want, they're not Isseis, they're not Niseis, they're not Sanseis. Well, they're halves. But if my daughter had married a, um, another half person, of, you know, half Canadian, half Asian, what would my grandchildren be? I'm saying you don't have, to, let's not think about that. And that's how Canada should be. So I think that, um, and this is the way it's changing, this is the way what we have to accept. And so in my speech or in my article, I said, anybody who wants to call themselves a Nikkei is a Nikkei. And his name might be, might be uh, um, um, Henry Johnson. It's okay. It doesn't bother me. We can go to the center. And there's a, there are many Caucasian Canadians or half Caucasian or half whatever, you know, in taking part in the uh, center's activities. I'm not going to ask them, are you, are you Nikkei or whatever? It doesn't matter. And I think that's the way it should be. People will have difficulty accepting that today, yet. But I think that's the way it has to be. That's the only way it could be. Because we, we were long past the, the days where we, we put people in. Oh, he's a, he's a new immigrant. Uh, he's a, he's a Issei. He's a Nisei, you know. Um, we're long past that.